morning everybody today I'm working on some more of my cabinets as you can see behind me I made a run to Home Depot got a love going to the Bob you know the big orange box uh, picked up a sheet of MDF for my countertop and some hardboard that I like to use on the on the countertops I know a lot of people use melamine I use the the hardboard or you know a lot of people use the laminate they laminate it on there. Um, I use the hardboard, something I picked up from Norm a long time ago. I made my cabinets, made my countertops that way in my my original shop. Um, you just get some tempered hardboard, throw it on there. It's inexpensive. Uh, if you destroy it, you destroy it. Throw a coat of wax on there and glue doesn't stick. Things don't stick to it. I like it because it's cheap and then I don't have to replace a whole piece if I, you know, accidentally cut into the laminate or whatever, you know, then it's like, I don't get mad at myself for cutting into something that's going to be a pain in the rear end to repair, replace, expensive. So I'm just going with tempered hardboard. I can show you that as I, as I do stuff here. But anyway, this is where the cabinets are. Kind of a you know, it was one of those norm, another norm thing. Um, this is how he made his countertops. I made my countertops that way. Put down, a, you know, two by fours on top here. I put a three quarter inch sheet of MDF on there and then the hardboard on top of that. And then I'll edge band everything with, I uh, got some maple. Yes, I got some maple from the Bob too. Oh yeah. We won't be doing that again, but I needed it today, so I didn't feel like driving all over Vancouver to get it. Um, but Norm's, he used half laps at every joint and screwed them together. I just decided to use pocket screws. Seems pretty solid. It's all screwed down to the top. It'll come up level with the chop saw. But that's what I'm working on right now. Now and here's the car set up. I got my Yakima racks on there, carry bikes and stuff, but I've used this for, for years when I haven't had a pickup truck. Throw a couple 2x4s on there, tie that down, some bungee cords, and then the wood MDF will sit right on that, won't slide around, tie everything, strap everything down, get some 2x4s that are longer, and then you can run straps over the top, front and back, so it won't flop in the breeze. Work pretty well just can't hold a lot of weight let's work well like this one of these days maybe I'll get a truck oh with it being MDF I'm gonna cut it outside it's quite uh, dusty you know I cut a lot of stuff inside but I don't want I just want to cut this outside I'll throw my uh, tempered hardboard on top of that cut all three sheets at the same time then all three sheets are the same size Got those laying over here. Just some tempered hardboard. It's already got kind of a shiny appearance to it. But if I throw some wax on it, it'll be good to go. Setting up here for the cut for the MDF. I actually clamped the hardboard to it, so it was only making one cut. Went through, checking things with my trusty Sears straight edge. As you can see, I clamped it board in the middle just to help support it. If there's any deflection in the middle, there's usually not any deflection in this. Checking things, making sure things are straight, making sure things are good so I can cut away. And away we go. A little preview of what it'll be. And it lines up with the miter saw base. Straight across. I ended up having to get eighth inch because they didn't have quarter inch for some weird reason. But I'll trim the front of this with the maple I got, the front, the ends, and then I'll have a, a nice workbench area here. Little preview. Time to secure the top down to the 2x4 base. 
just pre-drilling some holes, measuring it, trying to keep some clearance for the to the T-track that I'm going to end up putting in there. And I just wanted to make sure it was clear so that there's no screws when I run my router through that. Here's a drill that I really like is that black and white Makita. I've had that thing for 20 years maybe, 15 years maybe. But that's been a really great drill. really like that one. Time to cut down the edge banding for the countertop, cutting them into two and a half inch strips, make up the inch and a half plus the three quarter inch plus the quarter inch for the hardboard, two and a half inches. Just have to rip these down to two of them. And as I was going through here, something happened. And here it comes. Wait for it. Wait for it. It's coming up. Pick it up. Oh, drop it. And then I do this stupid move. What on earth? Put my head, didn't turn off the table saw. You can even see me shake my head there. Why did I do that? That was a dumb move. That could have just, you know, if I would have moved my hand the wrong way, could have bit into the blade and shot right back into my head. Just be safe out there. As you can see, I did, you know, I turn off the saw blade before I move that, let it stop. So I'm kind of thinking about the safety, but that was like a complete bonehead move. Why did I do something like that? Time to rip down the other piece. Leaves me with a nice little strip that I think I can use as runners later for a crosscut sled that I desperately need. But get these cut up and off to the affixing them to the top. Here I am getting things set up to put the edge banding around it. Just nailing it on with some 16 penny finish nails. You can see it's already serving its purpose, being able to support long items on the, on the chop saw station. And as you can see, I also was thinking about how to support this long piece while I nail it in. Went to grab some clamps and come back and ended up dropping it on the floor anyway. Attached some clamps there to hold it. Had to shim it up a little bit just to make sure it was nice and Nice and flush with the top, and then just nailed away. Time to ease this corner on my edge banding using a 45 degree chamfer bit in the router. Just adjusting my depth, on the depth I liked, and working my way around. Around the end, away we go. Now over here, I have a little gap because of the length of the MDF and my overhang that I wanted. Um, so the, there's about an inch or so where I am just kind of thinking, hmm, how do I fix this? I uh, guess I should measure it and 
figure out what I need and cut a spacer piece to fill in there. That would probably be a good idea. Just a small one inch, one inch piece in there. Get all that squared away. Off we go. Well, there we have it. I finished the top on this cabinet. You can see the nice shine to it. Put a coat of paste wax on there, on top of that hardboard. Buffed it off. Put a coat of paste wax on the maple. I put it around the edge. There's the paste wax that I use. I've had that for I don't know how long. Yeah, it's got to be probably 10, 15 years I've had that thing of paste wax. Used it on a few projects, but put it on here. Nice and slick now. Yep. Nothing will stick to that. Easy replacement if I need to. Oh, there it is. Video for the countertop here for my chop saw station. Hope you enjoyed that. Um, like, subscribe, save. Hopefully I'm going to get a video up every couple weeks. That's what I'm trying to shoot for, but we'll see how it goes as I get used to making videos and editing videos. So we're going to give it a try. Thanks for watching. Later.